Good day to our delightful viewers and welcome once again to Women on the Watch, powered by the Shapers Act. At Women on the Watch, our aim is to expose time-tested principles for your personal and relationship development. My name is Wanola Adetayo. In the past three weeks on Women on the Watch, we have looked at the case of the other woman. We discussed the reaping effect that the other woman has on men. We also looked at the circumstances that give to the rise of the incident of the other woman. In addition, we looked at her pain. And finally, we closed in the last episode by looking at the lessons that legitimate wives can learn from the other woman. Today, we will begin a new series titled The Waiting Room. The Waiting Room offers us the opportunity to interrogate the experiences that women have in a few of the common delays that are being experienced by females in our society. Our topic for today particularly is the waiting room dealing with delayed marriages. Our case study will be Rachel, the daughter of Laban and the younger sister of Leah. Our scripture anchor is taken from Genesis chapter 29, verses 20 and 21, verse 23, as well as verses 25 to 27. Genesis chapter 29. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days, for the love he heard to her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. Verse 23. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to him, and he went in unto her, verses 25 to 27. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, it must not be done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. I urge you to sit back as we listen to the story of Rachel. Our episode for today is titled The Waiting Room of Delayed Marriage. The story of Rachel. Rachel was the second daughter of Laban. The Bible describes Rachel as beautiful and well favored. One fateful day, Rachel met Jacob while caring for her father's sheep. It was a case of love at first sight as Jacob kissed Rachel. Jacob later made his intention known to Laban, the father of Rachel. Jacob had to wait for seven years, serving Laban in exchange for the hand of Rachel in marriage. The love struck Jacob, served these seven years so joyfully that it seemed like a few days. When the D-Day arrived for Rachel to become Mrs. Jacob, Laban threw an expensive party to celebrate his daughter's wedding. The years of waiting for Rachel seemed to have come to a good end until something terrible happened in the night. Rachel's father had tricked Jacob and substituted Leah for Rachel. What was supposed to be a beautiful night for the love-struck couple turned into a nightmare that could better be imagined than experienced. This delay plunged Rachel into the waiting room of marriage again, albeit for a short period because eventually 
Laban agreed to give Rachel to Jacob in exchange for another seven years of service. Whilst we can say all is well that ends well, the waiting room of delayed marriage was definitely not an interesting experience for Rachel, especially since it was due to no fault of hers. We cannot even begin to imagine the questions that must have plagued Rachel's mind, the insecurities that she must have dealt with, and the shattered confidence, just to mention a few. Such is the case of many women today who have found themselves in the waiting room of marriage, largely due to circumstances beyond their control. Are you in the waiting room of marriage? Or do you know someone who is? There is hope for you. Your day of joy is nearby by the grace and mercy of God. Stay tuned as we learn some lessons in the first episode of The Waiting Room, dealing with delayed marriage. Welcome back. The subject of delayed marriage is becoming a cause for concern in our world. As a result of late attainment of adulthood and many other factors, many women are in the waiting room of delayed marriage. What challenges are these women facing in the waiting room? What does scripture offer these women during the period of waiting? How are women to deal with this waiting phenomenon? What are the coping mechanisms for this stage of life? In an attempt to answer these questions, our episode today will cover three aspects of dealing with delayed marriages. They are three C's of dealing with delayed marriage. Three C's. The first, challenges of waiting and coping mechanisms. The second, choices, chances, and changes. The third, capabilities to develop in the waiting room. And so we will start with the first C, challenges of waiting and coping mechanisms. In this section, we will discuss six common challenges facing single women in the waiting room because of delayed marriage. And simultaneously, as we take each of the challenges, we will examine the coping mechanisms for each of the challenges. The first challenge we want to talk about is social stigmatization. Social stigmatization. Life without marriage evokes a social stigma amongst unmarried women, especially in patriarchal societies. In fact, the reason that Laban tricked Jacob to marry Leah was to protect Leah from the social stigma of becoming a single lady while her younger sister Rachel would have gotten married. In many societies, marriage appears to be the final achievement for a woman. While society does not seem to mind when it comes to males, but today, it is the females that get to be stigmatized when they are not yet married. So, how can a woman cope with social stigmatization? So, the first coping mechanism is for the woman to refuse to be defined by social norms and expectations. You don't have to be defined by social norms, most especially if you are a believer. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 16a, Colossians 2, verse 16a, says, let no man therefore judge you. So don't permit society to judge you. Secondly, define your identity in Christ. Your identity does not come from the world, does not come from society. Your identity comes in Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10a, 1 Corinthians 15, 10a, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. So whatever you are today is by the grace of God. 
Thirdly, discover God's purpose for your life so that beyond marriage, that becomes your means of life fulfillment. Therefore, your single status is still a part of God's grand purpose for your life. It's not an accident. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So these are some coping mechanisms for social stigmatization. The second challenge that single women face in the waiting room of marriage is the question of loneliness. People going through delayed marriage often experience feelings of being alone. After many of their friends have become married, they start experiencing feelings of isolation and feelings of abandonment. My friends, marriage is one of God's cures for loneliness. That's why God said in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. However, I will have you know that marriage is not the only answer to loneliness. There are several coping mechanisms for loneliness. Number one, reach out to friends of the same gender. This is underscored in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 10a, as well as Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24a. The second thing you need to do is draw closer to God and channel all that energy towards him. Develop a stronger relationship with God. In Psalms chapter 63 and verse 1a, Psalms 63 and verse 1a says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, my soul thirsted for thee. You can also look in the book of Psalms, chapter 30, 73, verses 25 and 28. Psalms, chapter 73, verses 25 and 28. We still have another coping mechanism, and that is to remember God's promises. Anyone who has Jesus cannot truly be lonely. Because her Lord is with her always, even during the time of the challenges of life. Matthew 28, verse 20b. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. The third challenge that single women face in the waiting room of delayed marriage is temptation. Temptation. We are human and therefore... Singles in the waiting room of marriage, they face diverse temptations as the body and emotions crave to satisfy natural urges placed there by God. Marriage was also defined and designed by God for legitimate expression of these natural desires as covered in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 9. However, when temptations come, what are the coping mechanisms? Number one, for the single lady, expect temptation. There's no point living in denial. We're human beings and as adults, there are certain biological things that the body experiences. So expect temptation and therefore be ready at all times to resist with steadfastness. First Peter chapter five, verses eight and nine. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. What else can you do to cope with temptation? Number two, trust in God. You have to, as a female who is single, to trust God that has endued you with enough power to withstand any temptation that he permits you to come your way. He will always make a way of escape for you if you refuse to yield your body unto sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. 
1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. He says, there had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted beyond that ye are able, but will with temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. The third way that you can cope with temptation as a single lady in the waiting room of delayed marriage is to avoid temptation completely. In fact, run from temptation as if it's a plague. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13a. Matthew 6, 13a. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So avoid it. Be wise enough to completely avoid compromising situations. Steer clear of predators that are just out there to exploit your vulnerability. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 to 20 says, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. Brethren, these are a few of the challenges that women deal with. I want to give you just one more way to cope with temptation. And this is invest your single status in God's kingdom. You see, the single status is going to go away very soon. It's a gift of the moment. So make your singleness a gift to the kingdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 34. 1 Corinthians 3, 34. The unmarried woman cared for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. You can also look at Psalms 126 and verses 5 and 6. And in doing this, win souls, occupy yourself with sharing the love of Christ and you will reap eternal joy. Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of a righteous person is a tree of life and a winner of souls is wise. Now let's look at the fourth of the challenges that single women face when in the waiting room of delayed marriage. And that's the challenge of companionship. The challenge of companionship. Many singles in the waiting room have attained certain level of financial independence. And many at times they have attained career status, which they wish they could share with someone who could be their companion. So how does the single woman cope with this gap in her life. Number one, expand your girls club. What does that mean? Hook up with like-minded females who share your faith and uphold your moral values. Psalm 119 verse 63. Psalm 119 verse 63. I am a companion of all of them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. We could see that young as Esther was, she surrounded herself with maidens. Maidens are unmarried singles. In, in other words, she had a girl's club. So what you need to do to, you know, cope with that gap provided, you know, by the absence of companionship is to create your own girl's club. Second, extend your networks. Network with like-minded professionals so that beyond the ambience of the church, beyond the ambience of believers, extend your network. Go out with like-minded professionals. Join a body of professionals and attend their annual and sometimes quarterly events. Furthermore, attend relevant Christian programs for mature singles. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20, Proverbs 13, verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So you've got to watch very carefully the type of people that you congregate around yourself in order to cope with this issue of absence of companionship. The third thing to cope with in the absence of companionship is to fill that void by giving away your lack. The love that you crave Show it to others. How do you do this? Find a charitable cause to occupy your mind and time to pour your resources into. Dorcas had no husband 
She devoted her time, her skills, and her resources to improving the lot of widows. She chose that. And she had a fulfilling life, and she left a rich legacy, which qualified her name to be one of the female heroes of the Bible today. The Bible enjoins us in Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Luke 6 and verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over, shall men give unto thine bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. Number five of the challenges that women face in the waiting room of delayed marriage is what we call insecurities and self-doubt. Many single women harbor insecurities. They often wonder whether they are not being married is due to their physical unattractiveness, or maybe they have personal flaws. In fact, some keep wondering if they will ever get married because time seems to be passing them by. Indeed, many are tired of attending weddings in hope of meeting the right man. Others are tired of the futile matchmaking efforts of their well-meaning friends. How do you cope with this insecurity? Number one, simply adjust your thinking. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Many married ladies are not necessarily better looking than you. Many are not smarter than you. And indeed, honestly, many are not more righteous than you. Your confidence should not be in your looks or your strengths, but should be in your God. Proverbs 3, verse 26 for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Please realize that you are totally complete in God. And as you keep hope alive, don't give up hope of getting married, no matter your age and no matter the circumstances. You know, there are many people that I know, people laugh, but it's the truth. I have a friend, she married at the age of 47. I know of another woman, she married at the age of 52. Whether you are young in your late 30s or in your 40s or in your 50s, the Bible says in Jeremiah 32, 27, Jeremiah 32, 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? What you finally need to do is to adjust your attitude. Being single is not a sin. Being single is not a disease. Contrary to social perspectives, marriage is much less about age. It's about timing. It's about getting the right spouse. Stop recounting past errors. Even if you have had errors along the line, God's plan for you as his child will yet come to pass. As we will be rounding off this section, I want to leave you with this Bible quotation. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans 8, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. God has called you for a purpose. He will not abandon you. He will not leave you in the waiting room of delayed marriage. I enjoin you as we wrap up this particular edition to join us in the second edition of the waiting room of delayed marriage. We will continue our series. Till I come your way next week, this is one of our data, the shaper, signing off and saying, hang in there, the Lord is on your side. God bless you.